Hey guys, this is Gloria Ward with another self-love conversation. And today I have Miss Caroline Toplin, who Topperman, excuse me, right. <laughs> is going to um, just discuss her journey as a world traveler, a blogger. Uh, she has put herself out there as a business owner. She is doing so many wonderful things. And if you follow her on Facebook, where she's going to give you her Facebook information and her Instagram information, she has some amazing pictures of her travels around. Uh, I mean, like all over the place. And I wanted her to come on because I really wanted her to discuss her journey because uh, sometimes we always get like one-sided where we're uh, sometimes get closed and not open to different things. Well, I can tell you with her traveling all over the world and, and, and just doing different things, it's going to open your eyes to many things. So Carolyn, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's so yes. fun. <laughs> so, you know, uh, one of the things that we do at the I'm Loving Me Project is, you know, we always ask uh, the women um, not about the end journey, but we start at the beginning where because we believe that there was a point a time in your life where you looked at yourself in the mirror and you said you know what either i need to get this together i found my purpose or there's something i really need to do so for you what did you see when you looked in the mirror to start you on your journey wow <laughs> that's a <laughs> huge question um i think for me it was always about the journey Ah. And there was never that end point because I, I think my journey really did start before I was born. Wow. Um, and it was growing up that was always instilled in me. That was always um, a huge part of my life was mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, so I was, I was born in Sweden, mm -hmm. um, but I spent most of my life living in Canada and then um, about four and a half, five years ago, five years ago, I guess we, with my husband, decided, well, I kind of decided that <laughs> you know, living in Vancouver was hard. So right. we decided that um, just to sell everything and move to Poland for a bit, because that's actually where his journey started as well as mine. Mm -hmm. And having um, grandparents who were Jewish who had to flee at the beginning of the war right. and then they survived the war. Um, they came back to Poland and they were, they helped rebuild the country and that's literally helped rebuild the country. That's um, and then my, that's my maternal grandparents, my paternal grandparents fled the war as well. And my grandfather, he helped build a huge highway um, that linked the Middle East. They lived in Afghanistan. Wow. And my grandmother, on um, my my maternal uh, paternal grandmother, my my dad's mom, she was like this. I never really knew her very well either. I only met her once. But her story was also told to me right from the start. Where in Afghanistan, this Polish woman who doesn't speak the language, and she goes to the market and has rotten fruit and stones thrown at her by the men so she is you know she fights back and she learns the language and by the end of their stay she's the only one who's allowed to trade with the men in the market you learned all the cuss words yeah probably <laughs> <laughs> um, and she also convinced the um, the general who was in, who was leading, who was in charge of the area to let the girls wear shorts to gym class. Um, and so I grew up with these stories. These were, these were the, the, they were always part of the conversation at home. Mm -hmm. um, later, my parents uh, in 68, they basically became political refugees yeah. and got kicked out of Poland and weren't able to come back. Mm. And they lived in Iraq, they lived in Paris, and then they lived in Sweden, and then Canada. So 
that's why it, for me, it's always been about that journey. It's Absolutely. always been, it's always been that discover new people, new cultures, new everything, and just bring that into my life. Mm-hmm. It was never just one place. <laughs> wow. But that's amazing though, because you know, you're so cultured and you can blend in. Do you speak more than one language? I speak three. So I speak Polish, French, and English. Look at that. That's amazing. And so you get to travel and move around and and really experience all these experiences. But when did you start? Did you start at at a young age when you're moving around? Were your parents still traveling in these different areas or you just moved to these different areas? And that's where you guys settled. So basically, before we even came to Canada, we, my grandparents had already left Sweden and they, were, they settled in Germany. And so before we came to Canada, we went to uh, Germany for six months and then we came to Canada. And one of the things that my grandparents did is that every other summer, they would say they would get us over to Europe and we'd just hop in the car, we'd pick a place. And I love to say that my mom was like the first airbnb before Airbnb was around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we would land in a place, and this is actually, this is a good tip anyway yeah. now. Yeah. She, we would land somewhere and she would call a local real estate agency and she'd say, hey, I'm looking for a place for two months. Mm. And then we never stayed in hotels. We would just rent a place for two months and live with the people who were there. So it was, that was just always a part of what we did. Right. Yeah. Man, Caroline. So when, so how did you start the journey of being a business owner and a blogger and all this stuff? Was that along with it? Like you just start writing about it? Were you inspired because of such a a great family history? So I, I don't think I, I really appreciated the family history until now. Okay. Um, But (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I think I always had that little bit of rebel in me that I never really wanted to do what was expected of me. Mm-hmm. And in high school, I went to a very math and science oriented high school and it was of all course. very structured and mm-hmm. that was not me at all. <laughs> and so I was dancing and I wound up going to film school at university and somehow, I don't know, I always had that fight in me. I had this one professor who he was all about having like the five, um, the the little white boys club in the front of the room Mm -hmm. and all of us had to fight and he kept trying to kick me out of the program and I had to keep getting back in. Yeah. And then I decided after, because I was still dancing. So I thought, okay, you know, I'm going to spend the next few years dancing and performing because it's that I can't dance forever. Right. Um, So I put the writing aside a little bit and then it just, it just all, I don't know, like I would fall into these things and then, um, my he was my fiance at the time but my husband and he moved to Vancouver so I I thought "Eh, you know it's an adventure let's go and I think it's that I've just been open to trying anything Mm -hmm. and then when I got to Vancouver I realized I didn't know anybody we we had no family there it was basically my first time there Mm -hmm. it's like yay make a life yeah I did and I wound up uh, get, I'm get, wound up getting work at a gym. And so I was like, well, I know Pilates. That's from um, all the dancing I did. Yeah. And then I just sort of built up their Pilates program at the gym. And then I thought, I could do this. I could be an instructor. So I did. Mm-hmm. And then one of my clients was this really wealthy guy. And he's like, hey, if you want to get a studio, um, I can, you know, I can rent you one of my spaces. And I was like, Sure. sure. Why not? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I wound up starting having a Pilates studio and it was really successful um, because just the way I approach things. So it was, I don't know, I'm going to age myself, date myself right now, but um, when BlackBerry first came out, it was probably yeah. like the second generation BlackBerry. Mm-hmm. And I wound up running my whole studio off of that. So I could get clients really fast. They could reach me really quickly. And I was yeah. like always available. And then it just started to grow that way. It was just, and so I met all these really amazing people in Vancouver. And then when I decided to close my studio, I literally had clients coming out of the woodwork offering me jobs and I never said no. So I wound up working in sports insurance. I wound up uh, doing the aftermarket, the automotive sales where, you know, when they try to upgrade, upgrade you. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
I was not good at that job. Um, <laughs> and, and then I got into real estate. So, and living in Vancouver, Canada, you can't not be in real estate. Like even your cab driver is in real estate. So wow. I just wound up. Yeah. It's cause it's crazy. Anybody on the West coast knows that you sit down and you just talk real estate all the time. Wow. So I just tried everything. I just did it was just, I was just open to doing everything. And then at one point I just missed writing. And I was like, this is what, you know, I, I laughed that I got my first rejection letter when I was eight years old <laughs> and, <laughs> and I just missed it. And so I took, um, just at a continuing education class mm -hmm. at like a university, I went and took, um, a social media course Yeah. and I really connected with the instructor. And so I, and he was talking about blogging and I thought, well, this is perfect. I, you know, I can get back into writing, just start out slowly. Mm -hmm. And it sort of, I caught it, I caught it at a good time, the wave. Mm -hmm. And it, so I just started getting right back into writing that way. It's and not I, like you had a lot of your grandmother in you where you were able to form these relationships and really move back and forth and you uh, meeting all these fantastic people. So the stories sound like they helped because quite naturally you were able to obviously be a people person where, you know, people naturally gravitated to you and started offering you things. And you had all of these great, amazing experiences yeah, right. and it's funny because I'm naturally really shy. <laughs> and I would people, believe that. Would yeah, nobody that. ever believes me, but no. um, it was I was I was shy for a really long time and then I was about 13 or 14 years old and I was I I'd had enough. Like I hated that feeling of not uh -huh. not being able to speak up. So yeah. I went and I just signed up for acting classes. And I have to say, like, for anybody who's listening, that's the best thing to do. Just go and sign up for just nothing. You don't have to, like, this wasn't improv. This wasn't anything crazy yeah, out of right. my, yeah, like, it wasn't really out of my comfort zone. It was just mm -hmm. studying a script and then presenting it. And it helped so much. That was what that's really helped me tip. just get out. Yeah, yeah, that's a good tip, especially for people who are shy and very introverted in everything because you're, you're, you're telling yourself you're playing a role. You are being this person on the paper, you know? Wow. And so now you're blogging, you're writing, and do you have a book already or are you still I, writing your book? I do. <laughs> so what happened is, um, so it's actually, can I, I can show yeah. you, I can put it up. Yeah. So it looks like this. And it's called Tell Me What You See. And basically, it has an interesting story, which I will tell you. Um, and so what happened is, is so I, like I said, I was living in Poland for about four and a half years. And then suddenly my husband came home one day and he's like, listen, I just got the job of my dreams and we're moving back. Oh. And we wound <laughs> up actually moving to this, um, this little town. It's, it's like a... It's kind of, it's a small town, which mm -hmm. I, it's so not me. I'm, I love the big city. Right. And I suddenly found myself again in it, even though it's back in Canada, it's still like a total culture shock because mm -hmm. it's so different. And I hadn't lived on the East coast in like 17 years or something crazy. Gotcha. So what happened was that I, I just got this horrible, horrible writer's block. And I was sitting around and I couldn't write my, and for me, being creative is, is huge. Like I need that. I need that in my life. I need, and I'm also one of those visual people that I need to go see. I need to go to museums and I need to go to the ballet and I need to do all of that kind of thing. And suddenly I found myself with none of that. Really? And it was bad. I was sitting there and I was- Is it because you were doing other stuff or you just, it was just, it your just mind was somewhere terrible. else? It isn't oh. available here. And so it was just, oh, there's no one inspiration. Really. There's like one main street and half the stores are closed. So oh. um, <laughs> it's like a little text, it's like a little tech city. And I, and so I just, it was that. And I just missed my life. I had already set up this life in, in Warsaw, Poland, and I was missing that. And it was just a combination of everything. Right. And then I went, okay, wait, hold on, hold on. Like you have a degree in film, you're a visual person. So like, let's re-examine the situation. 
and I bought myself a Polaroid camera Mm. and I just started taking photos and I would write what I saw. Just this is what's happening in the photo. Nothing, not beautiful writing, just what I'm seeing. And suddenly stories started happening. And the first story was a picture that I actually took in Toronto, in the city. And it's just a man walking in front of a streetcar. And suddenly that man had a whole life. Wow. And all of a sudden I was writing again. And then I started looking through the photos on my phone and I realized, you know, look at your phone. I, I'm going to bet that pretty much all of us have, you know, 5,000 pictures on our right. phones, right? A lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I started looking back and scrolling through back all those pictures and um, looking back at all the travels that we uh, went on when we were in Europe. Um, so just all these amazing cities. And I started just reminiscing and I realized that I'm probably not the only person in the world mm. who, suffer, who gets creative block or just feels kind of down sometimes right. or, you know, just is feeling uninspired in general. Right. And so I basically wound up putting together all these photos and putting um, just writing ideas to write about. So the idea is, is that you can look at the photo and let it inspire you, or you can follow my writing prompt and just write what you're seeing or follow the prompt. And then this way, it just kind of inspires that creativity because the idea is that creativity breeds creativity. So I don't care if you're a singer or if you're a dancer or if you're a painter or a writer, Mm -hmm. all of the arts, all of that, they work together to inspire us and they work together when you're, when you're blocked in one, seek another one. You know, it's like, if you're feeling bad, what do you do? Put the music on, dance around, right? That's the arts. That's, that's, is your, husband, is, is your husband as creative as you are or is he straight and narrow? No, yeah. he is. He's, he's in the tech industry. So he started off with programming, but that's creative, creative in its own right. But he's also, mm-hmm. he also writes. And actually what he does for his sort of like evening detox mm-hmm. <laughs> is he paints. See, and, and, I was, and, and the reason why I said that was because uh, creative people, you guys are so captivating where you don't even know it. <clears throat> it's true. It's like, you know, I have a tech background, right? But I was so into uh, this person who was so creative and can write on the walls and do all these different things. And I'm just like in awe, like, wow, I don't even know how you come up with these things. Where does that come from? And where do you get inspiration? You would draw on napkins and zone in on different things. And it's like, you just look and you just fall so in love with that because you're like, wow, this person is really using like all of their brain. You know what I'm saying? And and so that's why I asked because I was like, you know, it's usually you get the very creative with the very straight and narrow, you know what I'm saying? But to know that he's painting, that's, that's a very good thing too, because it probably came from your inspiration where you're bringing out that creative side. Yeah. And well, his job too is super stressful. So he needs that sort of creative outlet himself just to Mm -hmm. be able to de-stress. That's the thing about creativity, right? It's, 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 a, it's the same, they've done studies. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't quote anything off the top right. of my head. <laughs> but I know there have been studies done where basically they talk about um, how it's, it's akin to meditation. Yeah. So it's that, it, it, like your brain one. responds the same way as meditating. Mm. So even like 15 minutes to sit and doodle on a napkin, yeah. is, it, it has huge health benefits too. And it comes natural to you guys too. I wish, like I have a very hard time. I'm like, man, I don't even know how you guys do it. So it's like uh, in your book, so you have pictures and then you have stories and pictures and stories. So this one looks kind of like this, where you'll see a photo uh-huh. and then you'll have some text and then you have room to write your own text. Wow. In it. So it's like a workbook for, yeah. for you. That's, that's this one. That is yeah. fantastic. And tell us where we can get it. Like I'm, I'm excited about it. Where can we get the book? 
So it's available at um, online at Amazon, uh, Barnes okay. and Noble. All the big retailers have it on online. And just if you look up, tell me what you see, Caroline Topperman, it comes uh, up. Okay. Yeah. And give I'm us like, your Instagram, give us your Facebook, give us everything that you have. <laughs> <laughs> so um, on Facebook. I'm pretty easy to find generally because Caroline Topperman is actually a unique name to me. So I think I'm the only one in the world that has this name. Uh, It was easy to find you. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So if in doubt, um, and I'm actually starting an online course to go with that, um, Mm -hmm. this, this uh, book, but the, but everywhere else I'm also style on the side because that was the original part of my blog and it was all about style and fitness and just, having that uh self-care kind of thing yeah Yeah, it's been a long time (laughs) but that was the uh that's the other sort of facet of me and of what I do okay so I was gonna ask what's next you have the book now so now you're creating the course and you know people can connect with you so the course when will will that be coming out June 1st June 1st is my goal that's very soon and then I, the other part is that um, I'm writing a book about my family history. That's the kind of the other thing I'm working on right now. Mm-hmm. Is that, is, so you're going to listen to those stories now and take them seriously? Well, and, and actually, together? yeah, I actually got back from Poland last week and I was there talking to my uncle who was, I think he's like the oldest person right now in the family. Okay. He, and I thought I have to catch his stories before, yeah. you know, before nature takes its course. Then I sat down with my dad recently too, and I got all his stories and um, we were cleaning out his place. And I realized my mom, thank you for being a bit of a pack rat mom. (laughs) She she kept everything. So we have, um, we have, I have like this book that my grandfather wrote about his chronicles of his life. So it runs and, the family. Yeah, apparently. Wow. <laughs> I wish the women had written more, yeah. um, but the men did. So it's actually pretty good. So they've wow. been, yeah, so it's actually pretty cool. They've, I've been able to look at that and um, beautiful letters that my mom wrote her parents. And so I'm taking all of this now and it's going into this big book. Okay, Caroline, yeah. make sure you keep <laughs> up with us. Let me know when the course comes out. Uh, I will definitely uh, put the book out there and promote the book in the community. Uh, I will get a copy of your book because I love books like that where I can look at the picture and all that stuff. So you said we go on Amazon and we type in either your name or what do you see? Tell me what you see. Tell me what you see. Okay. And tell me what you see. Caroline, thank you so much for being here, okay? Thank you. And please, please keep up with us, and Absolutely. I'll definitely put it out there for everyone. So thank yeah, you so I, much. Yeah, I you. love your show. I've been watching all of the episodes. <laughs> oh, thank you. And thank you so much for the interview, and we'll definitely have you back, okay? Thank you so much. It was my pleasure to be here. All right, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Bye. Bye.